G'day, it's James Greenfuss and welcome to PTSD TV. In my work helping people recover from post-traumatic stress, what I've noticed is uh, post-traumatic stress is but one ailment or condition that they're suffering from. You ask them as well, and they've probably been diagnosed with uh, depression and quite regularly other forms of disorders. I like that term, disorder. I, I personally believe it's, uh, it's actually incorrect. Uh, I don't believe that we should be telling everyone that they have a disorder. What's simply happening is the body is out of harmony. The mind and the body are not cooperating together. And the mind specifically has gone into overdrive in an attempt to actually deal with certain situations which it perceives to be not normal. So that's what the, the body and the mind naturally do. However, what can quite regularly happen is that post-traumatic stress will lead to depression and anxiety or disorder leading to a depressive disorder. It sounds a bit weird, but what's actually happening is they're very much related and that is there's a right, wrong or judgment uh, battle going on inside your mind. Now I put an audio of uh, a, one of my radio segments I did um, on the Sunshine Coast Radio about the judgment cycle and it's on the, um, the TV station as well, so you can have a look at that. But in a short summation, what's happening is you've got a right, wrong, good, bad argument happening within your, in your head. I should have done this, I shouldn't have done that. And you've probably experienced many of them. So just imagine this is right and this is wrong. And they come together and they push. And neither is giving ground. Now, if you push really, really hard and did that for 35 years, how would you feel? Yeah, tired. Well, that's what's happening inside uh, a person with post-traumatic stress. Actually, it's happening inside most of us, but it goes to the extreme with, uh, with someone with PTSD. And that internal right-wrong battle leads to the person being tired. It takes an incredible amount of energy to deal with the mental turmoil and the emotional and physiological responses associated with that emotional, uh, mental turmoil. And because of that, when the guard is down, when a person's tired, the guard drops. The person, they feel deflated and they'll get this hopeless feeling. Hopelessness will very quickly turn to a state of depression. And that's how anxiety, panic, and everything can at times lead into a feeling of tiredness, hopelessness, and then depression. And that's called the depression cycle. At the extreme, depression will lead to suicide. When a person believes that there's just nothing else they can do, it's not worth living, I can't stand it anymore, the best thing I can do is take my life. So when you see a person getting tired, um, when they've got this, you can see the internal battle going on, when they start judging themselves very harshly, these are key symptoms that the judgment cycle, the judgment battle is going you know, ballistic within them. And that's when a really good supportive person will turn to them and say, okay, what's going on for you? And then sit there and listen. Don't try and solve their problems. At times, if you try and solve their problems, what they're going to do is close down on you, tell you you don't know what it's like. And it's true, you don't know what's going on inside their head, so you don't know what it's like. One of the great things you can do is, is listen to them, understand them, try, I call this active, or it's actually called active listening, and one of the best things you can do is imagine a blank canvas in front of you and get them to paint the picture. And if don't you go to any mental picture of what you presume they're saying. You listening exactly to what they're saying and get them to paint the picture of how it is for them. And if there's a blurry spot on the canvas, get them to ask questions around, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand. And then get them to explain. Now, if it's getting too much for the sufferer, they might not want to explain. And then the best thing to do is just to be there, just to sit, and be with that person because it's just too much it's too tiring for them to actually explain so try and put yourself in a position where you're able to listen to them because that's what they often want to hear don't judge what's been what's been said what's coming out of their uh, mouths especially if it's directed to you because this isn't about you at all it's about them and what's going through their mind and their body with their emotions so just <coughs> excuse me listen with an active uh, an active sense to try and get an understanding of what's going on for them. Don't judge what they're saying, don't judge what is coming out of their mouth, especially if they're talking about death. That's quite a hard subject to deal with, don't judge it. But when they start talking uh, in a negative way, the judgment cycle has kicked in. Another question to ask is, would, 
would uh, do you feel that anyone could assist you? Do you feel that there's anyone out there that could help? Again, you're wording it in a way where you're giving the power to the person to make the decision. They might turn to you and ask for your help and say, well, what do you think? In that case, possibly finding someone that you believe will uh, assist that person, that they, that person will develop an affinity with, a trust with, and that you believe will be able to help them get better is the way to go. You might know a counsellor or a psychologist or someone uh, that can do that, or even a good mate who can just get that bond happening, just be there for that person and allow them to just release what they need to be released. So I hope that's been uh, valuable. Really look forward to your comments. Just please place them in the, uh, the, the section below. And remember, you can choose to be happy.